Today's video is how to find the perfect homestead property. Hi, it's Janie Pendleton. We're back on our homestead and today we're going to be talking about what to do to start that homestead. Where do you start? Okay, well first of all you want to find that perfect piece of land. Now what you think might be perfect might not be so perfect once you start diving into the paperwork. So, and we're going to discuss this. Oops, sorry, I got a barn door getting opened. <laughs> it's creaking. There we go. So basically, there's things you're going to want to look for. And I'm going to give you a diagram and we're going to talk about that in another video. But let's say you found the perfect piece of property. And like me, you've got all your county approvals. You've got your building permit. Maybe there's a house already on it and you're going to remodel it or maybe it's just perfect. Whatever the situation is, you're going to make it work for you. Now, if it's worked for someone else and there's no water issues in the basement or in the crawl space, if the farm seems to be flowing really well and you're happy with how the farmer's working it, then that's a good farm to buy. And make sure that you look deep and not just on the surface what they want you to see. Make sure you're seeing the actual workup of that farm and how it's actually working for you. Now, like us, we bought five acres that had a barn on it and it had been used for goats and cattle in the past. But they had knocked down all the old buildings except for the old barn. Because that would have been probably about a thirty to fifty, sixty thousand dollar redo. So, because um, you know it's like a roof. Putting one on is about uh, fifteen to twenty thousand. Tearing one off and putting one on is about thirty to thirty-five thousand. So, you know, if something's already here. It's going to cost you more to to remove it, to remodel it, and to build a new one. So you're most likely going to want to try to make things work that are already there. But what we did find out was we had a well underneath all the weeds here. We had a well. We researched that well with a well driller, and it was at state at being only nine to ten years old. So it was a basically a brand new well then we tested it it was pumping out over a hundred gallons per minute and since we're near Sugar Creek and we were getting a lot of chemical runoff the fields we questioned that well veterinarian bought the field around us being that he doesn't use chemicals on his field so we could have our organic garden and our bees all right so you've got the perfect piece of land you're so happy right you think everything's gonna go well Plan on a few things going awry, but you do want to plan. And I tell everybody, if you stick with a plan and a really thought out good plan, part of homesteading is all about being as self-sufficient as you possibly can for your level of health and fitness and um, desire and the want to do it. It all has different levels. So I call homestead, people can homestead in the city and have little garden plots. People can homestead in the country and have animals. There's a lot of variety, so you need to sit down with your plan and decide at what level you want to be. Do you want to be like the Amish and plow with horses? Then you need to figure out what level you're going to be. And remember, horses don't make you money in most cases unless they're race horses. So you're not going to get your money back out of that. In fact, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So try to make wise decisions in your planning. So try to pick animals that will mow your grass like sheep or goats. Little pygmy pigs can be in with the chickens and they can clear a garden space in a matter of a week or less, okay? And remember what I always tell you about planting a garden? Give yourself plenty of garden space and be sure you only plant things that you're going to can, preserve, or eat. Or that you know maybe a family member likes. I don't like Brussels sprouts. I do not take up garden space with Brussels sprouts. I like um, asparagus. So we're going to find a place to plant asparagus roots. So... Learn your, um, read the back of your packages of your seeds. Watch plenty of videos. I have plenty of videos out there on how to plant herb gardens. And you know, if you plant your basil near your tomatoes, your tomatoes can pick up that basil flavor. And that is so good for pastas and dishes. So I actually set aside uh, two or three tomato plants and I will actually plant basil or other herbs like lemon thyme around those tomatoes. And it just has a very distinct flavor. It might just be something I pick up. I don't know. But people love my salsa. And that's my secret. I plant my basil around a couple of my tomato plants. And it really just takes in that flavor. So um, 
So just some tips for you. I'm going to plant some lemon cucumbers. They're lemon in color, but they're very sweet flavored and make a really great, I mean, they're not very big, but they make a great, a sweet relish. And people love this on their hot dogs and hamburgers. So I'm planting some more of these. Um, you'll find that you'll start finding uh, different seed types that you really like a lot. So you'll want to collect those types of seeds. But N-A-T-E-S, N-A-T-E-S carrots and I like how these do in our gardens in central Indiana okay our like soil that. here at this farm is really good we got it soil tested because of all the animals that have been on here and over the the past three years since it's had animals and we've been able to get it in pasture grass and some nice grass going uh, we've got really black top soil and down it is just beautiful because this is all hay fields now and it's not being treated we have just beautiful soil and this is great because now I can have animals and I don't have to worry about chemical runoff. So there are a lot of things about your acreage, however big it is, however big you want your homestead to be, that you need to consider. And what are some sheep? Um, my daughter wants us to get a goat. I've raised goats. I, you know, I've just always been a worker. And if you are too and you feel like you can do it, then set yourself goals each year of how far you want to be on this homestead. What is your goal? You don't have to attain it right now. You don't have to. Take your time and get done. Of course, I'm older, so I can't take too much time, right? But I also want time to travel in my RV. And this is why I'm standing here today filming it in my RV. I wanted to show you that I still want a vacation. I still want to be, I still want to retire. I still have things I would like to do. I've never seen the Grand Canyon. I would like to see the Grand Canyon can't do that if you got farm animals and you don't have family members that are willing to come take care of it for a week or two and why would you go get all that responsibility and put that on your family my mom's 76 my son has his own farm and his own chickens and things he's raising and hogs i'm not going to send him clear across two counties just to take care of mine every day for two weeks no this has to be something that you're just like you tell your children when they get a new puppy or a new kitten you've got to be willing to take care of it it goes the same for adults. So you have to ask yourself on the top of that list. All right, I can handle a garden and I can be away from it for a little while. We can put timers on the sprinklers. We got someone that will come uh, get the produce so it doesn't go to waste or pick it for us. Get it in the cold storage. We have that. But maybe you don't have time every day for the animals or to milk a goat or to milk a cow. Okay? So if that's the case, you mark those things off your list. But maybe you've got uh, the pasture ground and you got five acres remember one cow can eat seven and a half round bales i'm talking around the big round bales of hay every year and that's if you have pasture grass so that's just through the winter they'll eat seven and a half of those so how many acres have you got you can get seven and a half bales of hay off of it plus have pasture ground so you need to really think about before you get an animal can you actually raise that animal? Five acres, you can get the sheep to, to mow your lawn for you and go all over the place. That's great. They'll fertilize, do it. Chickens are great. Um, they'll clean up your garden and you can use that straw poop for, on your garden over the winter. And then in the summer or in the spring, you'll have the best garden ever. I'm telling you that chicken poop straw, working it in in the spring, excellent. But here, I chose a spot for the garden. My husband and I did that used to be the milking house where they used to um they had one building that stored the milk i'm gonna show that to you in a minute and the other building where they actually brought the goats in and lined them up to actually milk them and so the concrete center pad was there but all that area where they'd poop and stuff in there and they'd do all the milking and all that protein and energy and all that good stuff in there and all that fertilizer it went down into the inside of the building that did not have concrete in it well, we turned that all over and the soil was black. That's a good thing. Okay, that's a good thing. And I know this was all pasture ground. So everywhere we've dug so far to check on things and water lines, we've hit really deep black soil. It's so rich in nutrients here. Beautiful rolling ground. Nobody that fertilizes around us. No fertilizer runoffs. We, we hit on the perfect ground. It already had a well. It already had electric, 400 amps, and uh, a three-phase service. Um, we, we, hit, we hit gold. Okay, we hit gold. Rolling land, I brought out my transits, and, um, and I brought out my contractors. And before I pulled any building permits, and I said, hey, 
should I approve this land for a building? They all said, yes, Jane. And they all pointed in my backfield and said, look back here. You have the perfect spot for a pond. So I ran up to Frankfurt and I said, how much for a, a, how much for a permit for a pond? They said, you don't need one. You don't need one. You go to the county surveyor and pull it. But you don't need one if it's under 5,000 square feet. And you have to go at least 10 feet deep here in, in, in this part of Indiana. You have to go 10 feet deep to have fish and I thought catfish the most popular catfish restaurant is just down the road and there's other popular catfish restaurants around us that people come from all over the world to go to they really do and um, like we have Donaldson's chocolates they ship around the world we have uh, Booker's restaurant we have the Colfax restaurant we have so many great restaurants around here where people travel to see them and I thought I'm a chef I will raise bass and catfish and I will sell them, sell it to the local restaurants. So I'm going to call them next week and find out if this is something that they'd be interested in working out a deal with me on. So I can grow enough produce for us for a year and to can for a year and I can sell and I can put up fish and can fish. Yes, you can can fish and, and you can freeze it. And plus I can go out and I can break the ice and get some fresh if I want to too, because I know how deep to put my bobber. 10 feet. I know it's going to be 10 feet deep. So, you know, I'm going to keep these fish alive through the winter. They're telling me uptown how to do it. And I'm going to have a pond. Now, why do I, now how am I going to pay for this pond? They got to dig it out to do the backfill on the basement of the house because my land is rolling. I'm not going to have enough backfill. So they got to get my driveway up almost two and a half feet off the ground to be level with the road which means I got to level the basement up out of the ground and now I get a walkout basement too. And along with that walkout basement, I now don't have to pay concrete for the back porch. I can do it in a deck, which means I'm going to have a certain area that goes uphill. So what can I have now underneath that deck that's going to overhang? Well, two things. I can either have a storm shelter, which I already have a bunker in mine, or I can have cold storage and a place to put the milk from the animals if I don't want to do a milking house. And I thought that's perfect. I'm going to do cold storage and I'm going to have a door from my basement uh, coming outside and right around the corner. I'm going to have a nice shaded balcony that comes out of our bedroom and underneath that is going to be a wall, a patio, then, a, then, then, the, then the thing. We're going to do a stone wall and then inside underneath there we're going to have a door. And that door with the concrete block wall or concrete poured wall is going to lead me into a cold storage room for my root vegetables, you know, my onions, my carrots, for all these items. So I don't have to can everything. I can put it pumpkins, pumpkins wrapped in straw. I mean, things that, that I can do. I don't want to draw the mice in the basement, so I don't want to do that in the basement. I want to do it outside and I want to make sure that I put it in a room that is temperature controlled humidity controlled. So I have all this drawn out on paper. It's all ready to go. And like my greenhouse that ended up being self-watering, well then I'm going to control the humidity in there the same way. And I'm going to make so it doesn't rain in there, but it does stay a cool temperature in there. So, so I'm going to be working with Indiana weather. All right, so now we've got Indiana weather we're considering. And remember last year, I didn't get a crop out. My first year owning the land, and I did not get a crop, crop out on my other farm ground that I bought. No crop. Acres of land that sat there because of flooding. So my first year was a bust, and I had it cash rented. So I couldn't take his cash rent because that wouldn't be right, right? I mean, it just wouldn't be right. So we decided to turn that area into pasture ground and then we'd never have to worry about it again because the cows would get through it. I mean, the cows would get, get through it. And so would the sheep. So we made our list. We said, all right, what are we gonna do? Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we've got our well, we've got our septic location, we've got our building permit, the house is staked. We're gonna show you that in a minute. But we had to find a place for our garden because it's spring and I didn't want to pass another year up without a garden because, you know, I already told you, I'm out of my canned foods, my all my home pr uh, preserved canned goods. Uh, for the most part, I have like maybe 20 jars of stuff left and that, most of that's jams and, and juices. And I think I have a couple of uh, beef barbecues or pork barbecues left. Got to get a garden out. And then while I'm here doing construction because I'm a builder, it only made sense for me to start a homestead 
and go on a bigger ground than our little homestead. I'm going for but you can homestead on a half acre. You can homestead on a quarter acre. You can do it in the city. You can do it in an apartment building on a balcony. As long as you don't get that balcony too weighted, you should be able to grow some upright or some hanging down tomatoes. Maybe plant some basil down the side. Make yourself a little salsa garden. You can do it. So, but if you're not in the situation where you can build your own home, then maybe try to find a farm that already has a house on it. And then maybe you're really good at remodeling or your husband or your wife is really good at it. Then uh, work together as a team. One of you does clean up while the other one does the cutting and the, and, the, um, and, the, and the nailing, you know. Find a way to make it work. Be a team. I, uh, look at Becky at Becky's homestead. She was homesteading by herself for years. And she, she taught me a lot about bravery and about how to do that on my own. I didn't think I could do the acreage on my own, so I built in the city and just had a small garden. It turned out I overdid it, I'm sure, but it's beautiful, and I did that on my own. I wasn't married yet. I had three kids heading through high school and college. Then I met John. We got married, and then I had a teammate. I'm telling you, life is so much easier with a teammate. Oh, especially if you have a good, good Christian one like I got. I got the best husband in the world. I mean, look at this. I'm in here filming. I don't know if you can see him through here, but he's out there gardening in the garden. So, we've discussed things to look for. How to make a plan. Uh, uh, what, what to look for in that acreage. And how much acreage. And, and to make a plan. What's your pros and cons? What is it you're really wanting to do? Are you wanting to have animals or just a garden? Well, I still suggest... Start with your garden no matter what. Get it out in the spring so you'll have produce in the summer and fall. Eat what you can off of it. Can what you can of all the extra and make sure you plant plenty, okay? Make plenty of marinara sauces, tomato sauces. Tomatoes are the big thing. Salsas. You can live off all these multiple vegetable things, you know, and then in the, in the early spring you can get out your lettuces and it's just so healthy for you. And to get outside, you know what kills the virus in a few seconds? The UV rays of the sun. So we're going to go outside now and we're going to discuss where to start. We're going to start with the garden. We've got to start with the garden. Don't need the animals yet. We can, we can get that food up. We can get it frozen. We can get the produce in. We can get this started. So we've got a plan. And I'm going to take you out right now. And I'm going to show you our plan just for the garden area and how we're going to set up the garden and the chickens. All right, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. But what have you done here? Let me come in. He's tilled this and turned this over. And when I was telling you how black the soil is, look at that. It looks great. Without putting anything on it yet, it looks great. And this was a goat milking house. Because see, they got the concrete here. You can see the foundation of the old building. And this is where they stood to get milked. So what we did is we tilled this up. Now he's uh, turning it over, raking it out, getting any rocks and wood chunks out, getting the rest of the weeds out. See, this is before, <laughs> after. <laughs> and he's worked really hard. And we're gonna, we put down landscape fabric. That's the best way to weed it. <laughs> Just keep the weeds from coming up at all. It's made of corn, so it won't. Yeah, and the tree's here, but we're actually going to break up this concrete. This is the rocks that's came out of here. But anyway, we're going to take the tree here and we're going to move it out here. And this next year is going, or this year maybe even, is going to be our greenhouse. So the foundation is here. So this will give us a 17 by 21, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's a 17 by 21 building. That's where we're going to have a 17 by 21 greenhouse. And that's what we're putting here. It's going to be a nice... Um, gable ended roof uh, greenhouse right here now this pad needs work so i'm going to get a load of builder sand and i'm going to put paving brick here and run the paving brick up a little bit a step up here and that will be our door coming in and then where the tree and that back broken up concrete is there when that's all gone we're going to till that up and we're going to have a beautiful u-shaped garden inside the greenhouse so we're going to have plants and, and citrus fruits and things all year round and look what we have here we have a water line and right there's where we turn it on right there that's the that's the, the handle to the faucet there so we got water in here all right what else do we have on this farm daddy 
electricity. Yes, we have electricity right here at the meter at the pole, so we can run the electricity right over here. I'm going to bring a sidewalk to this neighboring building here, and this is a um, a 14 by 10 building here, and we're just probably going to buy a building because it's a common size for buildings. And this is a newer pad; it's in great shape. But what else do we have here, Papa? Water. Yeah, we have another water pit. So now I can get my potting shed going and I'll have a place for water in here as well. I'll put rock in that thing and you can just let the ground Yeah, go. we've dug out here. I wanted to see if there was a foundation under this slab. And you can clearly see there's not a foundation under this slab. So, um, so I've got to figure this out, but we're going to put some rock underneath there and refill that back in there so I don't nobody steps in the hole but yeah that's not on a foundation so what we might have to do here is dig some spots out like this and put some block or pour some footers or something here with some block on it because that's yeah we gotta get down 32 inches here for the frost line but I think this would probably hold a typical building I mean it's been here it's compacted I think it would be all right and they've obviously had another building here yeah. so um so it should be all right. I hate to risk it, but I can always lift the building back up and do something else with it. But we're going to probably put, and also if we have animals to milk, I'm going to milk them here. Where the old, There's another water spigot here. Let's zoom in here. Where the, uh, see the two poles there? That's where they used to pull them up and, uh, and scrub them up for the 4-H fairs and stuff, we were told. So there's another water spigot here. So there's three water lines here. So right here is probably, I'll probably take that and make that my milking area right here and bring this on over like some, with some shade. Yeah, we plan on having, getting some sheep's milk, some goat's milk, maybe a cow. So, but we own all the way back here and around here to just almost to that barn there. So, and this right here is where the house is going. You can see the flags out here. So this is all going to be house. The walkout basement's on this side. Cold storage is back here on the back. These trees right here have to go. And uh, you can see my banner flying out front here. That's my company sign. A tree we tried to burn out. That didn't work. <laughs> but we also found a place here. We thought maybe these might be apple trees. They're mulberry trees. So we cut everything down except for the two maples. And we're moving them out here to give our chickens and our dogs some shade. The barn's going. Let me zoom back, Let me zoom back out here. Yeah, the barn is going bye byes We're getting a new barn. But here, we share this road right here with the other farmers, and we let them come in, or else they would be landlocked here on the other side of the creek, and we can't let that happen, so. And another farmer has his garden back there, so he comes back here almost every day. Um, this used to be his family's farm, so. And then our orchard, oops, I stepped in a hole. You gotta be careful of that when you're at a farm. Hold on, let me get back here. The silo here is going to be my office. The silo is going to be my office. Lucky, we saved another um, maple tree there. <laughs> but here's my orchard here. We've got peaches, we got apples, plums, and cherries. And two of our apple trees died, so we're going to replace those. So, but everything else lived. And then all these with the. Um, See me in here. All of these pine trees here are Norway spruces. I picked them up for about two or three dollars each. And I planted a whole bunch of Norway spruces here to help with the snow and the wind and everything coming here on this drive coming to the barn. And right. then here's the other water line. Don't know that I need that for anything right now. Maybe later on we'll have a bigger garden out here, maybe, and we can have some sprinklers on it. But uh, the chickens are going to be over here. This again is the greenhouse and the garden. It's going to be year round here. Brick pavers here. Brick paver walk to here. And then we're going to have the uh, potting shed here. And again, water. So we're going to have a potting sink. We'll have all that in there. Um, the dog house is here. She likes it there. So we're going to leave her there. And then the barn's getting all rebuilt. See the tornado came through here. It tore my barn up. But that's okay. That's okay. And then there's my silo. That's going to be my office. There's some more of those pine trees. Okay. My sign. 
the well is up here this promotes all this and you can see down here another well uh, pump down here let's see if we can show that to you see that we got another handled well there that one's and then in the barn we have three or four so there's like nine to twelve well pump water pumps even over here in the orchard that I just showed you has a water has water so we really hit gold as far as the water already being set up here so we can water the garden here we can water garden here and we got water in the potting shed to water the plants when we're planting them or storing storing away our tools we can wash our tools and our hands and then we have over here where we can do the milking or the cleaning up for 4-h for the grandkids so and, and look at the rolling i don't know if the camera's doing it justice but look at the rolls that i have in my beautiful land the nice soft rolling isn't that gorgeous i wish i had their barn that's our property line over there by their barn <laughs> organic farmer next to us so and then the pond's gonna go right in out here in this back section of cropland there and then you can see the crops that we have over here on this side of us over here oh yeah I'll show you the where the sheep are that's the dog hookup but this is all going to be um, you can see a building sat here as well and then they came in onto this barn right here they tore all that down so we're gonna get rid of all the concrete from here down all of this is going we're gonna free up that tree I might leave that tree there actually I might leave that one there that one's got to go and then I'm gonna landscape and kind of stairway landscape this down plant me some beautiful flowers and things that will help keep rabbits out but we'll keep the chickens fed I might give them some fresh lettuce or something in here and then the chicken coop when the new barn is up I might fix it for now I don't know but we're going to make this the chicken coop. And we we got the farm fence. We took the farm fence off from right here. It ran all the way down here. And we brought in this fencing here. And we're going to use it. Here's our neighbor. And we're going to use it in here. And this was the goat and hog pens were in here. And you can see the feeders are still here. You can still see the feeders. So, um... But you can see what happened to the roof here. Yeah, so we're going to turn this into the chicken coop side or the goat side. I'm not sure which yet. We're going to see, or the uh, sheep side. We're going to see who lives with who. <laughs> I'm going to have to do some more homework, so write me down below. I just, I love the old farm fences and things, don't you? I want to show you my view from here. I'll scan you slowly and show you our, our, our cropland. There's the bees. This is where I'm going to put my beehive, by the way. I'm going to sit it right here. I'm going to sit this, this post up against it and look at all the clover and everything that they're going to be able to get to. And the, with the woods being right here, I even thought about putting my beehive along the fence there so they could get into the woods. But yeah, this, this is ours. That is. All right, so, and then there's the barn, the backside of the barn. I need to do some fixing. Like I said, tornado came through here and knocked off a lot of that that roof on that thing but and then we're going to clean all this up this is just their burn pile when they moved out and they burned the buildings and stuff here i think so we got to clean all this up but we re put up a new fence here along the uh, side road here to get to the farm fields and we've got an entrance down over here by this by this mulberry tree but we think we might keep the one mulberry tree and this mulberry tree up just to give the sheep some shade and we might put like a little building right here but they've got access to get in and out of the barn from here as well but i'm going to give them access right here right here when the new barn goes up and then we're going to have a taller roof here and then this is going to come down to a longer pitch and then like i said so what do you think but see when you're out looking for your homestead, you got to decide what you want to do on that homestead and how much money you're willing to spend to do it. So this barn would have been in good condition except for, well, we got to go in and I got to show you. <laughs> I could have fixed the barn, but when they moved out, they did a little something stupid. <laughs> See this right here? They had an antique Massey Ferguson tractor sitting here, sizable one. And I'd say it would be equivalent to like a John Deere D in size. And they picked it up with a regular truss 
and a pulley. You can still see the rope here. They had two ropes, two pulleys, and they pulled it up into the truck to haul it out and to take it out of here. When they did that, they broke these two trusses. And I've done everything I can to try to save it, but yeah, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. So I'm losing, you can see where it's sagging, I'm losing my barn. The weight's just coming right in and you can see where it's parting here now. I've had to fix this one and now you can see where it's taking this one out. So the whole roof here, is, you can see daylight here, it's all starting to cave in. I'd say another year or two, if I don't fix it, we're going to lose the barn. All right, things like this. This was laying on the side of the road, we picked it up. Perfectly good door, it's going to be great for the greenhouse. It's going to be a great security or a great glass door for the greenhouse. So, um, and I got plenty of hinges because I'm a builder. So I got plenty of items like that. Um, my dog sled is up here. The cradle I made is up here. And looky, my spinning wheel. You see it? My spinning wheel is up there. <laughs> but I had this great barn wood everywhere. We got to keep a lot of the barn wood. Look at all of it. They used it for a loft. And I'm going to be totally using this stuff right here for uh, things like my mantles. I got more. Look at all of it over here. Do you see all the wood? All the old barn wood? It's selling for about $10 a foot right now. Plus, I'll have all the wood out of the barn itself. Right here's some animal pins in the barn. Let me, there's all the wood. Look at all those posts and stuff. This was for, I believe, a horse. And this right here, I believe, was for some goats, or maybe they separated them when they were uh, farrowing or something. I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue. Maybe a hog was in there. I have no idea, but their feeding buckets are still in there, and they look like they're sitting pretty high, so it might have been another horse. I just don't know. But it is set up for animals, and that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. I just got to get a new barn up. Here's the old corn crib. Look how tall that goes. This is fun in here. This is fun in here. What kind of treasures did they leave us besides corn cobs? Oh, look at all the brown glass um, jugs. I bet they made their own wine or their own liquor. And look what else they left me. They left me a whole bunch of old windows out of the house with the screen still attached. So I have all kinds of uh, windows and doors here. That would make a cute little house, but they're all broken and busted. So a lot of screen doors were on the old house. Don't see any reason at all why we can't clean some of those up. And use them over the top of the garden to protect your garden. Okay, so those can be used for all kinds of things in the garden. And we'll be doing that. We'll be doing that. Okay, I brought my... This, this went in my outdoor fireplace, remember? So I put my pot on that. That's how I cooked in my outdoor fireplace. Um, there's a garage sale and I picked this up for five dollars. No, yeah, five dollars. I picked up this tire swing horse for five dollars. And we're going to hang it out of one of the trees. Here's that bed that I put out in the garden to grow my peas and my, um, and my vines on. And, my, and I have even used it for roses. I just, just pulled it up and brought it with me. It's just an old iron headboard. And I told my husband, I think I'm going to uh, keep it painted black. I mean, we wore it out and everything with all the gardening. And I think I'm going to put a bed on it. And I think I'm going to make that Katie's room's bed. It's nice and uh, perfectly and real, real worn. Not, not fake sanded worn. <laughs> Ages here. We have the feeders they left us. These are great. Look at the patent numbers. They patented those feeders. <laughs> and then you got the goats or the cattle, whatever feeders here. Um... Where they put the hay in here. I'm going to take it that was for goats. Write me down below and tell me what you think. Look, there's still straw put in there. They just up and somebody passed away and this is what happens. It just, it's stuff still sitting there from where it was before. Sad but true. And um, I love the big old, the big old trees that were cut down. I love this kind of thing. Um, I've been picking up granite slabs from here and there. And there's a piece of quartz that we picked up from one of the bathrooms. I'm going to cut it in half and it's going to become either either it's going to work in our bathroom or it's going to become um, the other kids' uh, guest bedroom upstairs. A two sink because I've got like a barn door between the two sinks. 
So, and then I, that got broken to move. But I got these from the graveyard for $15 each. And they left the doghouse. And that doghouse, by the way, saved my life. Saved my life. There was a hunter out here hunting. I don't know if you can see the bullet hole here or not. And the doghouse was sitting right here. Sitting right in here somewhere. And you see the bullet hole right here? It ricocheted upwards. Hit the top roof of that doghouse right here. You can see right here where it hit the doghouse. Ricocheted off. I was standing just right here. I was standing right there. And it ricocheted off the doghouse. It, and then it went up. And then I heard it ting. And I heard it go out that hole up there. See that hole right up there? And I was standing right there. If it hadn't ricocheted off that roof and went up, um, I was right in line for it. I would have been killed. So hunters not paying attention to the direction they're shooting their weapons is just absolutely... That was a deer slug, by the way. The road that they put in for me. And look at our field. The fields are just beautiful. We got an apple tree over here. Look at the size of that maple. And then they come along here and they, they cleaned all that up for me. So, But I keep it mowed. But this is all my land here, too. And then this fence is all new. And I think this is going to be... What do you think? Do you think this is going to be a big enough area for my sheep? This is all going to get cleaned up. And then they'll be able to go into the barn. I'm hoping right here. And to go into that pen. That's my hope. The problem is, is that's the direction that storms and tornadoes and stuff seem to be coming from. So I'm trying to protect the animals at the same time. i got to move my fence post. But yeah, and then at night the coyotes start sounding off around 9 o'clock. Yeah, look at all the wonderful clover and alfalfa and stuff growing in here. Yeah, my bees will love this. So we're getting a flow hive. So I want you to check out flow hives. They're from, they're from Australia, the inserts are. Or you can get the whole hive from Australia. And by the time you get a queen bee and a brooding nest and everything all set up, it's going to cost you around $1,000. By the time you buy the suit, the hat, the glove, anything that you need. The full body or the half suit. But you do need that. And um, make sure you're not allergic to bees when you do it or none of your kids are. But we have a guy that lives just beyond, let's see, that direction about half mile. And he's got about, oh my goodness. I'd say he's got maybe seven or eight beehives. And he's doing really good with it. So I'll probably, when they when they uh, split or they swarm, I'll probably end up getting, i got to be careful, make sure I don't get his swarms. Because bees will travel three miles and he's only maybe a half mile away. So maybe I'm three quarters of a mile away. So I have to be careful that his doesn't split and end up in my beehive. So, of course, if they did, I'm not going to argue it. But <laughs> wouldn't be fair to him, though. Unless he doesn't want any more hives, that really wouldn't be fair to him. But um, I've been taking classes on beekeeping, so I'm no pro, but I can answer a lot of your questions now. Because uh, I really studied up on the bees, didn't I, Daddy? Yeah, you did. <sighs> but yeah, it's good for me to uh, answer questions. It helps me to remember my, you know, what I learned, my course, what I learned. So, but I'm gonna. Remember, aim small, miss small. Start out small. You don't have to have a huge garden. You can have something of this size. And we're going to have corn, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, onions, uh, pumpkins, and squash. And, uh, and just learn how you can plant these things together. Normally, I go by seed. But remember, we moved and I didn't have my greenhouse. So I went ahead and just bought plants that were already established. Peppers. I need to water all that. All right, so he's out here working this, and my job is next. Be sure and use a deer fence around your um, garden, and be sure and put the tent stake pins in, or the rabbits will get in from underneath. But you've got to use a fence around your garden. I'm telling you, you'll lose your produce if you don't. Either you're planting it for you, or you're planting it for your animals. Right, Dad? Which is it? So, so that's the farm setup. So that's where we are. The house, the basement, everything's ready to go. I've got all the bids done and I'm just waiting to sign and send in my bids. And all my contractors say they're ready to go for the most part. So I got all 
Uh, as a builder, I have a list when I build for other people. I have a list of materials and colors and names and brands, and I already got all that filled out. So all I got to do is send that into the lumber, and they're going to bring it all out in the stage that I'm at while I'm building. They'll bring it right to me. I'll call them up and say, actually the representatives will just usually come out and say, hey, look, I see you're about ready for your siding. Hey, look, it looks like you're about ready for your brick. I'm going to go ahead and get you scheduled on that. So looks like you're ready for your... Uh, for your insulation and your uh, fire caulking we're gonna go ahead and set you up on that so usually the representatives will come out and they will because they want my continued business as a builder so they'll come out and and they'll treat me like a queen and, and I love it because I don't have to spend all day on the phone I can be up here getting it done so um, but if not be sure and hire yourself a really good builder and pick your house plan and pick it out according to what your needs are my needs are, since I'm a YouTuber, I needed room around the kitchen and stuff to film. And for track lighting and things like that. So, um, to be able to move in and out of the house. So, I made open spaces for filming, didn't I, Papa? Yeah. And then when other YouTubers come and stay now, we'll have a place for them to stay. Because they'll have their own walkout basement room. Or they'll have a guest room upstairs. If one of the kids or grandkids aren't in it. Yeah. But that'll give us a guest room and a place for the kids. So other youtubers so we'll get more involved now with other youtubers and having them come to the farm this is going to be my office slash a place for people to stay so there's a lot of people youtubers and people that said hey i'll come stay in your silo that will be fun so another income you could make is renting out your silo after you design it and build it so there's when we come back we're going to talk about incomes off the farm. I think that's very important. Besides garden and produce, that's not going to make you a lot of money. But you save a lot of money canning your own food, right? And you can get jars at garage sales and in all kinds of places. So um, you can lease out your grain bins. You can sell your grain bins. You can um, lease out your barn space. I've done that for $200 a month. I leased out to a furniture company. I leased out a, uh, it became their warehouse. So, um, let's sit down here. Instead of all this moving around, we'll watch Poppy work. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I'm watching him work today. I'm wore out from all the walking around and filming. <laughs> now, it is a beautiful day out. I'm just letting, actually, I'm letting this rest before I rake it and, and, and put lines in it. Because, see, it's it's pretty moist because it rained. So, yeah, I know you raked it. And I'm letting the sun kind of dry it up a little bit so I can plant it. If you want to run chickens around your garden and have a chicken run around your garden, uh, it's a great way to stop grubs and it's a great way to stop uh, grasshoppers and other uh, things from coming in on your garden. They get about maybe 70 to 80 percent of them coming in and that's always a good thing. You don't want your chickens to be in plants that are too young I've, from experience because they will eat your plants. They'll eat your produce, they'll eat your fruit and your vegetables. So. Yeah, you don't want that, especially certain certain types of hens and roosters. Yeah, they'll come in there. So if you got like the little guineas or something and you want to run them through here, they're really good at getting the grubs close because they're shorter, they're close to the ground. They'll eat all that up and they scratch and they keep all that um, aerated. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Chicken poop is a good thing. But the bigger ones will eat your produce. So when you get your um, plants up and pretty stocky looking, then you can run the bigger ones in. Um, just be sure and pick your fruit from the bottom up first. <laughs> it usually doesn't ripen that way. It usually ripens from the closest to the sun out, but yeah. If you like fried green tomatoes, you better save them because your chickens will eat them. But we decided to put up the deer fencing. He folded it in half. Our deer are pretty big. I'm pretty sure they'd probably jump that. Has me a little worried. But he's tucked this down in there and we're going to use the tent stakes on there. Having something like this, like a little uh, tiller like that, is a good idea. Um, and you can see how black it is now. It's really drying off. I'm gonna come through here and rake this, make my lines. I gotta find some, st I gotta find some sticks here somewhere so I can label what's what, or just draw out a map of my garden and pie work. I'll know, I'll know what it is when it comes up. But um, so I gotta get the edge of a hoe. And make my lines and then I'm gonna start planting and we have what do we have here we have squashes watermelons peppers uh, sweet corn tomatoes all kinds of tomatoes romas all kinds of beefsteaks uh, more peppers um, we have eggplant 
And then, of course, I got the carrots and the seeds, and I got to get my onion set. So we're in early May. Normally, we can plant in April, but we could, I mean, the weather didn't let us, did it? Well, everybody that planted in April, they, they, they got the frost. frost killed everything. Yeah, they got the frost, so we're digging up. Look at all these pavers we've dug up here. This is all the rocks he's dug up out of the garden area. Look at how big they are. Oh my gosh, they're huge, John. <laughs> well, maybe that will protect the tree. Um, I gotta decide where I'm gonna plant everything. Remember, you can't just run off to the store. I'm gonna put a little this in the ground. I'm gonna work it in. Next up, I'm going to water my plants and then I'm gonna sit them where I want them. <laughs> Remember to lay your garden out with plants that work together. If it needs shade, my peppers, they're doing okay with a little bit of shade. I've planted peppers behind um, my uh, vertical garden before and they've done really well. And so did my tomatoes. So I've got the garden all fertilized. We're going to work that in. Then I'm going to make my line. I'm going to set my plants where I want them to go. And then I'm going to leave all the uh, area in the front for everything I need to seed. Like my onion plants or my carrot seeds. So anything that's going in on seeds going on the front edges here. Because those are the ones I won't be able to put the black paper around. So I'll have to have those close to the edge here where I can weed them. Everything else is going to get paper around it. There won't be any weeding with those. Just watering. And so we're going to set up the sprinkler system now so we can water this. I've got those little tripod sprinkler systems and they'll just, I'll set it to hit this. And then I'll put a timer on it and then we can have it watered all week while we're gone via the well. And remember, starting your homestead can be fun. So keep it fun. That's the most important thing, don't you think? Keeping it fun? Sure, it's hard work. Sure, it's going to take some time, but that's okay because what else have we got? But time. So we might as well have fun and the Lord says, be of good cheer for I've overcame the world. He also said, be of good cheer in our tyrannies and our, our tribulations. What better way to talk with God than in the garden, the garden of Wheaton. <laughs> All right. We love you. We're going to get this planted and we'll talk about that in the next video. Go with God. I hope you've learned something from this, and I hope this has helped you set up your little homestead. Blessings. Oh, there's Poppy putting in a new hose. Another stake in the ground. <laughs> Another one. All right, so anyway, this is John. He's up there hooking up my hose for me. And Jane Pendleton, we want to welcome you to our new little homestead, our little homestead. And, uh, we hope you enjoyed the tour. We hope you enjoyed starting the garden. And we hope you got some really great ideas on how to plan your homestead, how to plan your future. You always want to think a year or two in advance, if not up to five years in advance. Where do you want to be in a year from now? Where do you want to be in three years, five years from now? What is your total objective of what you want your homestead to be? And you, you attain those goals in, um, you attain short, long-term goals by short-term efforts if that makes sense but anyway we love you stay with god and stay with us be sure and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already be sure and hit the bell so you'll get notifications every time we upload a video oh there it goes love you god bless